Welcome everybody to uh, the latest installment of uh, Go to Market Global and uh, today we are going into North America and we are thrilled and delighted as always to have some fantastic virtual sages on the virtual stage to talk to some uh, ambitious and um, highly focused uh, scale-ups who want to land and expand there. Um, before we um, ask each of the um, experts to come to camera and say a few words, uh, I'd like just to introduce you to the rest of the GTM team, uh, starting first and foremost with my uh, co-founder and partner in crime, Ian Collins. Ian, over to you. Thanks very much, Mark. Just a couple of words, folks, and welcome this afternoon, this morning even. Um, just a couple of words about GTM. We started life about seven years ago, Mark and I, with an experiment to see if we could help uh, companies like yours expand internationally through a very practical program. And that started seven years ago and the idea worked very well. We've now supported over five and a half thousand companies uh, with their international expansion and market entry requirements. We work into North America, the Middle East. Uh, we do pockets of countries within Europe and we also do Southeast Asia and APAC in general. Um, today you'll um, meet a number of uh, advisors, mentors, in-country specialists and economic development organizations who can give you some great advice, insights and connections. And uh, at the end of the um, workshop today, no doubt some of you will then be looking at your plans and how to execute. And there GTM Global can help you in another way in that we have some uh, commercial services to help you with your developing your go-to-market strategy, your business plans, and then in terms of helping you with things like product market fit through doing pilots in country, proof of concepts, and of course the all-important business development uh, activities. We also operate an investor network, a global network, so uh, I know many of you are in fundraising mode, especially for your international growth, do uh, knock at my door or give me a, a call separately and we'll see if we can help you with your fundraise. Back to you, Mark. Thanks, Ian. Um, before uh, I ask the, our individual uh, partners to come and say a few words on camera, can I just introduce the rest of the GTM team, uh, starting with uh, the wonderful Selena, who is going to be who you need to be friendly with today because she is controlling the rooms. Selena, over to you. Thanks, Mark. Hi, everyone. I'm Selena, and I look after events uh, at GTM. And like Mark said, um, I'll be looking after you later on in your breakout room sessions. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, in a little while. Um, thanks, everyone. Lovely. Thank you, Selena. And if I can welcome a new new member to the team, the the wonderful Tamara, who is our partnerships manager. Tamara, to tell the the assemble holds a little bit about you and what you're going to be doing for GTM. Hello everyone, thank you Mark. Uh, I'm the Head of Partnerships and I'm working very closely with uh, Ian or Mark, uh, mainly connecting the different partners uh, and, and helping the companies connect with the, with the right markets. So be happy to talk to you as well. Fantastic. Right. Uh, uh, as uh, someone once said, let the fun begin. Um, uh, if I can ask to come uh, on onto screen, um, we've uh, we were hoping to have the Department of International Trade, both the DC Embassy and the uh, Los Angeles Consulate coming on later, uh, and hopefully uh, they will. But in their absence, the next person I'd like to invite, uh, which is actually has worked for the UK government uh, uh, and is now um, very much part of Indiana is Mr. Stephen Bridges. Stephen, tell us something about what you do for Indiana. Thank you, Mark, and um, good afternoon. Good morning, everybody. Um, as Mark said, I was formerly a member of the British government. Um, I finished my diplomatic career as the UK senior representative in the Midwest. Um, that was about five years ago. And ever since then, I've been working with, um, with UK companies and Irish companies um, primarily looking to to expand into the Midwest, and I naturally will steer them towards Indiana because that's who I work for. Um, I guess if I canvassed all of you in advance of this and said, was Indiana somewhere that would feature squarely in your plans? You'd have probably said no. You'd have, I guess, you'd have thought about California and New York. Um, you'll find as, as you go in and uh, down this journey, um, most of you will take a long hard look at one of the states in the midwest and um, it's where most of the advanced and specialized engineering in the united states is probably about over 50 percent of fortune 500s are there 
And most of these states are creative and innovative in their own way in how they will work with companies such as you. Indiana, I would put at the forefront of that. It's at the crossroads of the United States with the best logistics through, through road, rail, um, water, riparian. Um, it recently signed the first memorandum of understanding with the United Kingdom government. Um, very unusual for US states to do such a thing. Uh, such agreements are normally held at the national level, not at the state level. But again, indicative of of how Indiana and its 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 industries um, look to work with uh, the international audience. Why Indiana? Um, amazing workforce, some of the best um, engineering colleges in the United States. Um, very low down on the cost index of doing business, but very high up on the ease of doing business. Um, specialist in advanced and specialist engineering everything from batteries and, and future mobility all the way through to medical uh, engineering, orthotics, prosthetics. Um, big in, in a lot of the innovation space, especially around modern uh, technologies associated with engineering, um, ag tech, uh, logistics, medical tech. Um, look forward to talking to you all and um, I hope you enjoy the, the sessions this afternoon. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Ian. Thank you, Stephen. Always a pleasure. And if we can move uh, from uh, Indiana, or in Stephen's case, Surrey, uh, to actually Fairfax County. And we're thrilled and delighted to have on the call uh, uh, Dewey, who I believe uh, is in uh, in, in North, Northern Virginia. And, and obviously also Ian Metcalf, who also is in Surrey. But Dewey, do you want to kick off and say a little bit about Fairfax County? Sure, Mark. Happy to do that. Thank you so much for having me. It's nice to see you and uh, Ian again and Ian Metcalf as well. Um, uh, my name is Juhi Nathani. I'm Assistant Director of International Business Investment at Fairfax County Economic Development Authority. I am, yes, currently in Tysons, Virginia. And uh, much like Stephen talked about the, the benefits of Indiana, if you're a tech company and you know Northern Virginia, you're probably thinking, why am I not here there yet? So that's, that's what I'd like to um, lead with. Fairfax County, Northern Virginia is the tech hub of the East Coast. Uh, we, are, uh, we are home to 8,800 tech companies that operate out of here. One in four jobs are tech jobs. Uh, we are corporate headquarters central. And of course, the reason behind this is the proximity to Washington, D.C., the city that changes the world. Being next to the federal government is a huge draw for many companies to be in Northern Virginia. Specifically, Fairfax County is home to nine Fortune 500 company headquarters, and we have a diverse range of companies from hospitality to, to automotives to um, um, government contracting that are in Fairfax County. But certainly all of these companies are uh, more on the technology side rather than the actual manufacturing side of things. So that's where we have our strength. And of course, uh, one of the biggest assets that I think Fairfax County EDA has is its overseas offices. And we're very pleased that in order to cater to UK companies, we have Ian Metcalf as the director of FCEDA UK, and he is quite the expert in, in, uh, in both regions. So I'm gonna hand it off to him to continue with the Fairfax story. I'm, I'm conscious of time actually, Ewan, and Mark's got a lot of intros to get through in 30 minutes. So I'll, I'll do the rest of our intros as we meet the, meet the companies. Uh, I want to want, but look forward to meeting you all. Ian, thank you very much, Dewey. Thank you so much. And I'm going to move from Northern Virginia uh, to Stamford, Connecticut. We are thrilled and delighted to have for the first time on our GTM uh, virtual workshops, uh, Stamford CT. John, tell us some more about the, uh, the great city and state uh, uh, of Connecticut. Well, Mark, I'm, yeah, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. I will say that uh, Advanced Connecticut is a statewide, not just Stanford. So we're, we represent the entire state of Connecticut. Super glad to be here. Very excited to talk to you all. Um, and uh, it's, a, uh, it's a privilege to be able to talk about some of the things that we have going on here in Connecticut. Um, we're uh, a state that uh, where we say innovation is our birthright. And so we are a place where uh, we like to invent things and we like to support entrepreneurs and those who are innovating in ways that uh, will help them uh, ramp up and succeed. We focus a lot in life sciences uh, anchored uh, with our great university systems with Yale University of Connecticut and others. Uh, our advanced manufacturing and, and aerospace industry uh, is significant. 
Uh, we built uh, the American uh, Nuclear Submarine Force uh, here in partnership with our friends down in Virginia. We built the Sikorsky helicopter that has never had a mechanical failure. We built the Pratt Whitney geared turbofan engine, uh, and all those things are designed and built here in Connecticut. And we do about $23 billion in defense contracts last year, and we're a state of 3.5 million people, so we're punching way above our weight class. We do a lot of work in uh, technology to support these industries, especially our legacy industries, uh, insurance, insure tech, finance, and uh, fintech, uh, and are doing a lot of work around uh, offshore wind based on uh, the, uh, the projects that are going in and the supply chains that are associated with those. Similarly, you'll, you'll hear uh, folks uh, tout their workforce. I'd be delighted to do the same. Uh, we're proud of our workforce here in Connecticut and the ease of doing business here. You know, one of the things I like to tell companies that are entering the US market, um, if you would like access to Boston and you would like to access to New York and you'd like to survive uh, and not burn through all that hard won capital, why not come to Connecticut where uh, where I sit? Uh, I can be in Times Square in 90 minutes and Boston Common in, in two hours. Uh, and I pay one third of the price uh, uh, at best uh, for both of those places. The other thing I'll just say is Connecticut, as we said, uh, as I said, is we're a small state. We're, we're three and a half million people. And we like to say we're a one phone call state. So if you've got a problem, you've got a challenge in Connecticut, um, you're never more than one phone call away from the person that's going to be able to solve your problem. And, uh, and I can be that phone call for you. Uh, and uh, we'd be delighted to talk to you more about the benefits of Connecticut uh, and what we can do. We're, we think very carefully about the companies that we want to recruit here. Um, and we think very carefully because uh, we're committed to the success of the companies that land here. Advanced Connecticut not only does recruiting, but once uh, you're situated here, we do ongoing uh, work with companies to ensure that uh, the uh, touted promises are fulfilled. So uh, looking forward to speaking to you all today. John, thank you so much. It's great to have you on board. So we'll move from the East Coast right across the American continent to the West and thrilled and delighted to have with us today the city of Mesa. And Elise, would you like to tell us a little bit about what you guys do over in Arizona? Sure. Hi, I'm Elise Gobat. I'm with the City of Mesa Office of Economic Development. Um, we are part of the Phoenix Metro, in case you have not heard of us. Um, <clears throat> we're a pretty large city. We're the 36th largest city in the U.S. We have a population of 513,000 people. And then the um, metro area has, of course, more than 5 million people. Um, the City of Mesa has a large focus on tech and uh, manufacturing companies. We have a lot of data centers that we work with, including Facebook, Google, Apple, um, NTT, Iron Mountain, um, all of those. Uh, my colleague Kelly is, I don't think she's on the call yet, but she should be joining soon. She leads our um, launch point, which is our business accelerator here in Mesa that we um, have several different um, small tech companies that use it to um, grow their businesses. Um, and we also provide financial help, um, training, um, all that kind of stuff. So we're excited to talk to you guys. At least we're excited to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And now, if we just go a little bit north and a little bit west, we'll hit both Vancouver and Toronto. And we have some fantastic representative from those two cities there. Um, uh, I can definitely see, Lisa, you're on the call. I wasn't sure if the team from, um, from uh, Vancouver is yet, but uh, do you want to kick off? Yeah, I'll kick off for Canada. Uh, as you can probably tell, I've got a British accent. It's not fake. I'm actually from Britain, uh, but I live and work in uh, Toronto, Canada. I've been here since 2016. Uh, I love joining these calls and, and meeting many of the, the faces who I see today. Um, <clears throat> I, when I was in the UK, I used to be an international trade advisor uh, for the Department for International Trade. I also worked in foreign direct investment. And then I, I made a move into the corporate world and worked for Cisco Systems in their strategy and planning team in commercial. It was with Cisco I relocated to Canada, loved it so much, decided to stay. And so I launched my own business. So Bandwidth is my business. I help UK companies that are looking to come into North America. For some companies, you know, I don't say it's got to be Canada or, not, or uh, USA, but I think it's, it's worth considering both alongside each other because I think sometimes for some companies there can be a North America play and, and there can be good landing points in Canada, uh, which I can go into more detail on, on a call with you. 
Um, so in terms of the services I provide, I don't charge for anything I know people can get for free anyway. So I'm very happy to signpost and open my address book for someone who might be even looking for an accountant or a lawyer, just to speed things up a bit. I also work in partnership with the likes of uh, the British Columbia team. We're going to host the Canada room together today. Uh, so I, I'm not um, limited to, to Toronto. I, I do work across the whole of Canada, but we work together very closely with organizations such as uh, the, the British Columbia team. And, and, and if, if people want more uh, detail, uh, we can look at things like market research and market introduction services, and also that signposting as well, like I said, uh, which um, can help you hit the ground running. Uh, we really look forward to uh, connecting with you. It's always interesting to have those conversations. And I'll hand back to you, Mark, if no one is on the call yet from uh, British Columbia, but we'll see you later. Lisa, thank you so much. Uh, and if we move virtually directly south from Toronto, we'll hit the city of Chicago. And although he's not in Chicago, this is a man from Chicago, and this is the man, Mr. Thomas Torelli. Please, Mark. Uh, I'm Tom Torelli. I have a small law firm in Chicago by the name of Torelli and Associates. We're five lawyers working exclusively with small to medium sized European companies doing business in the US, trying to help them to minimize their exposure to legal risk when they do business here. And the way to use lawyers in the United States is in a preventive capacity, because if you wait until the problems, it gets very, very expensive, very, very quickly. And you never know what the outcome of, the, of a dispute might be. So what do we do? We help our clients protect their intellectual property rights, starting with trademarks, patents, confidential information, making sure that their non-disclosure agreement is enforceable in the United States. Uh, using a UK one may or may not cover all of the issues that need to be addressed in the US. Then contracts, I spend more of my time on contract negotiations than anything else, whether it be agent distribution, license, joint venture acquisitions. We do quite a few acquisitions every year and even new small companies may uh, have an interest in acquiring a business in the United States to jumpstart your activities here in the US. Setting up companies, should we have an American company? Why would we set up an American company? Why do people talk so much about Delaware? Is it a tax haven? Uh, what are the choices between an LLC and a C corporation? We can discuss those today or some other time. Um, immigration, a lot of you may decide you need to send people to live and work in the US. Well, one of our lawyers devotes 100% of her time to immigration matters. We other also have a couple of other services, including dispute resolution and something we call product liability preventive management. Uh, I look forward to our conversations this afternoon. And if you don't have uh, an appointment set up, we can always set one up at some other time. Happy to spend up to an hour with you at no cost. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Tom. Uh, and from uh, Torelli and Associates, uh, a very, very important uh, collaborator to them, that's International Management Solutions. And Sonia, tell us something about how you complement and work uh, for the delegates here today. Mark, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Excellent. I'm using a new speaker headset today, so I wasn't sure if it was going to work. Hi, everyone. My name is Sonia. I am originally from Chicago, but I've been based in London for the past eight years. By background, I am a US CPA, a tax specialist, and at IMS, what my role is, is to help make the lives of companies that want to expand into the US easier from Europe. So because we're, we've got a team here in London, you don't need to wait six to eight hours to connect with an accountant in the US to ask tax questions or accounting questions. So you can kind of bounce ideas off of us in real time. Our firm exclusively focuses on European companies that have done well in their local market and are now looking to expand into the U.S., whether that be a U.K. company that directly wants to contract with customers in the U.S. or a U.K. company that's thinking about sending up a subsidiary in the U.S. to directly contract with U.S. customers and vendors. In addition to accounting and tax, we can also assist with payroll services. So I kind of like to say that we're kind of, we're a one-stop shop for all your accounting and finance needs. I'm looking forward to getting to know a little bit more about your business and what your goals are and to, for the U.S. expansion and seeing how we can make that journey across the pond as seamless as possible. 
Sonia, thank you so much. Uh, and if we can move now from uh, accounting and uh, legal co and compliance to the wonderful world of marketing. And no one better to talk about the wonderful world of marketing than Mark Magnaka. Mark, over to you. Thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure for us to be here today. Giximo is a business growth consultancy. We're based in the city of London and we have a team in the States and uh, in other places around the world, including the GCC. We provide strategic advice and expertise globally to drive your business and international growth forward. We always start with the fundamentals, deliver a robust situation analysis, and then advise on routes to market. We then work with you to deliver the most effective go-to-market strategy and programs. We look forward to learning more about your expansion plans for North America today and sharing our insights with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, and uh, from marketing, let's follow the money and uh, talk to a couple of men who know a little bit about the cash. First of all, can I ask Sandy from ABGI to come to camera and say a few words? Hi, Mark. Hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, can I just apologise if my speech is a bit slurred? I've had a tooth out today and uh, it's difficult talking when you've lost a tooth, I'm afraid. Um, hi, everybody. I work with a company called ABGI. We're an international consulting group. Uh, we help clients accelerate their innovation activity. We do that by providing IP strategy work, digitalization, and much more importantly for uh, this workshop, we help clients identify and secure appropriate forms of funding. So we help clients with uh, grant funding in the UK in particular. We help with tax incentives, R&D tax relief, patent box, capital allowances, and we have a small network of partners who uh, can provide IP leveraged lending and IP leveraged investment. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, great to have you here. And um, have you ever seen a film called The Marathon Man? I have actually, yeah, a couple of times. <laughs> it, it, there's, there's a phrase there called, is it safe? But let's not go into that now. <laughs> Um, so, uh, from uh, a bit more on the money front, can we uh, welcome to uh, the call uh, our partners from Global Reach, but with a new person uh, representing them today, and that's uh, uh, Joshua. Josh, over to you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, hello, everybody. Yes, I, uh, I work for Global Reach. We are uh, a foreign exchange brokerage. Uh, so, we've been around for a, a couple of decades now, established in, in 2001. Uh, we've got offices sort of dotted around the globe. HQ in London, I'm based in, uh, in lovely Cornwall in the southwest of England. Uh, transact about £7 billion worth of currency annually for our clients, of which range from a sole trader all the way up to FTSE 250 companies and Premier League football clubs. So there really is uh, no job too big or too small. In terms of, of what we can do for you, well, it depends entirely on, on you and your company. Uh, our service is fairly bespoke, but we work really with an overarching goal of helping our clients to mitigate the risks that currency exposure creates. Um, so yeah, looking forward to speaking with you guys about your, uh, your currency exposure at present and uh, your projected exposure coming up. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Josh. Uh, and uh, from Cornwall, let's go to California uh, and the men and the women from Inner Onion. Over to you guys. Good morning, Mark. This is Steve. Oscar's on the line, too. Uh, we're so, here in San Francisco. Francie, actually, Steve. Francie has joined us, too. So, uh, I mean, she's our director of our energy markets. So, we'll, we'll get a chance to talk to her when, when you know, those companies that are interested in sustainability and so forth are. Uh, are interested in, in, in a go-to-market play in the U.S. Sorry, Steve, I did. I just wanted to say that Francie was here. Oh, Got it. So we focus on several things: B two B SaaS, um, energy, environment issues, or topics. Um, we provide uh, lead generation services, go-to-market plans around those industries, uh, and we have office space in San Francisco with connections in Silicon Valley. So if you're looking for a Silicon Valley address, we can spin one up relatively quickly. Nasser, anything to add to that? No, just basically you said a B2B SaaS is basically our, and partnerships. We actually help companies uh, create partnerships via, you know, reseller programs or, um, uh, you know, managed service providers, uh, consulting firms and so forth. Fantastic, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Mark. Thank you, guys. Uh, and following on that business development theme, can I welcome uh, a, um, a, a new a new player to the GTM stage, but one that who's very welcome um, on the East Coast in in Northern Virginia, and that's um, that's Robert from Embark. Robert, over to you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Um, 
Bob Gangi, I'm with Embark Business Solutions. We um, are dot connectors, basically. Our, our goal is um, put together an elite group of, uh, of companies. What we do is you, you, you bring it to us, you talk about what you want to do. We then open up our networks and make uh, warm introductions to our networks for you. Uh, we won't be your rep, uh, your in-country rep, but what we will be is an advocate for your firm. So we take a business uh, business development approach to um, furthering the, the, your expansion into the U.S. and uh, excited to talk to you guys about uh, what you're doing and what's next for you. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Uh, and finally, in terms of advocacy, uh, we should have uh, the men from VVAT in Florida here. Uh, is Lewis or uh, any of the other team here today? They may be joining us later. All right. Well, we'll leave that one. Uh, but uh, we're nearly there to the, the end, end of the sages, but with the, some fantastic one, um, um, gentlemen still to come. And one of those fantastic gentlemen is a man uh, called uh, Chris Hornby. Chris, tell us something about what Sheffield Howarth does. Thank you very much. Thank you for a nice introduction. Um, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Chris Holm, I'm a director at Sheffield Health. Um, we are an executive search talent management firm. We've been around for about 25 years. Uh, we've been in the US for about 20 of those 25 years. I'm originally from the UK, based in New York, and our clients are typically across consulting, tech and services. Having originally started in software myself, most of the clients I work with are health tech, I deal with an awful lot in the kind of space tech sector, but predominantly what we've been doing for the past 20, 25 years is support growth businesses. The early stage businesses grow via support of hiring through their leadership team, team builds, strategic hires. We do talent executive assessment, uh, and we also provide coaching services as well, particularly interesting for first time founders or, or hubs. And I think a final note, we, we are based in, in New York, LA, uh, the lovely Washington DC and Boston. Um, but a lot of our companies are to, to Stephen Bridges, a very valid point, uh, particularly in the tech space now, now based, uh, you know, in the Midwest and, and, and beyond. There, there is life beyond LA and New York. So I um, look forward to talking with you all throughout the day. There is definitely life beyond LA and New York, that's for sure. Um, and finally, we've got a, a couple of um, people uh, just finally here. Uh, Delighted to welcome back uh, to the GTM Fold, uh, David Paisley-Smith from uh, GFS. David, just a, a quick uh, heads up on what you guys do. Um, hi, um, everybody. Good afternoon and um, good morning for you guys over in the States. As uh, Mark said, I work for GFS. We're a carrier management company that specializes in e-commerce um, solutions. Uh, our biggest lanes is actually America. It's both our biggest lane for helping customers send goods to the States for final distribution to the end consumer, as well as inbound services from the States into the UK, providing final mile delivery solutions for um, our customers. Our customers are mainly online retailers and we've got been around for 20 years. So if anybody wants to talk about physical distribution of products uh, to into America or out of America, back into the UK, straight Europe, um, please um, let me know. Thank you. Thanks, David. And finally, but by no means last, um, but it's the first time on here, so he's a bit of a newbie, but it's nice to welcome him. And that's Omar from Found. Omar, quick resume on Found. Thank you. Lovely to connect with you guys. And unlike Sandy, I haven't had a uh, tooth out, but I have been just come back from a stag holiday. So <laughs> excuse me if I do slur my words as well. Um, very brief intro, um, Found is a commercial real estate agency based in London. Um, essentially, we help all companies across 17 different countries now find space within lease, uh, flexible space, or everything in between. So we help manage accounts from as small as five desks to global accounts, which will have three to 500 desks and employees. So if you do need a little bit of assistance in how to get into markets into the US or into the UK, Europe and anything else, feel free to ask. Pleasure to connect. Fantastic. This man has, a, has keys to many doors. So let us now, uh, um, I'm going to pass back to Ian and to Selena because we're now going to put all these uh, these wonderful, wise men and women into their own virtual rooms. So you should now be able to view the um, event schedule for today. Um, you should have received this ahead of the event as well to familiarize yourself with the, uh, 
plan of action. Um, so uh, just to explain how it works, um, on the um, left hand side, we've got a list of our companies that have registered to meet our advisors today. And on the right hand side, we've got the list of our advisors and the rooms that they are in. Um, in the middle, we've got a plan of meetings. Um, they are all 30 minutes long. And uh, what we will do is place you in your um, rooms uh, at certain times um, throughout the afternoon. Um, so you don't have to do anything. You will be moved from room to room according to the schedule that you can see here on the screen. Um, you will get five minute notice um, when the meeting is about to finish. Uh, so you've got a chance to wrap up your conversations. Uh, but then when the time comes, we won't be able to give you a warning. So you might be whisked away um, to the next meeting. So apologies for any abrupt movements uh, during the um, session. Um, and yes, um, a request to our advisors today. Uh, you have been allocated to your rooms and please um, just stay in your rooms throughout the sessions and we will just move the delegates around um, um, as, as we move along the, the schedule. Um, just to check if anyone's got any questions before we start. Uh, Selena, I'm just going to chip in there. If anyone has yes. runs out of time and you need to um, have more time with the conversation with the various mentors or you haven't seen someone you'd like to see, please let Mark, Tamara or myself know and we'll organise a follow-up conversation at, at a later stage. 